Hey everyone, and welcome back. So today we're going to be reviewing Clockwork Aquario on the Nintendo Switch. So as usual, let's start with the basics. Clockwork Aquario is a 2D arcade style action platformer. Now in the EU and UK regions, it actually already released on November 30th. However, in North America, it will be releasing on December 14th. And currently it is slated to be selling for $19.99 on the Nintendo Switch eShop. For the moment, there is no physical releases slated for North America, but other regions will be getting physical releases. This game was published by in, in Games and it has a download size of 505 megabytes. So now the question for today, is this a long lost blast from the past that has finally seen the light of day? Let's find out. And just before we jump in, don't forget that if you do like the content, to please consider hitting that like button and subscribing to the channel if you aren't already. Now for those of you that are unaware, this game is a previously unreleased 90s arcade game that was cancelled before the end of its original development. It was originally a project of Weststone, who are best known for Wonder Boy and Monster World and it has been restored and completed with the input of the original developers. What this means is that this is not a ported game you might have played before, but rather a game you are guaranteed to never have played. What also should come as no surprise, since this was destined to be a quick arcade romp, there is no storyline to this game, just straight up gameplay. But now let's jump straight into that gameplay. The game consists of five stages, each ending with a huge screen filling and colorful boss. Now this being an arcade game, a full playthrough of the game takes about 20 to 25 minutes and is really set up as a high score chaser. To add a bit of challenge, the original arcade mode is locked in the beginning, forcing you to finish the game on a limited number of credits. The challenge level however is not very high and I easily finished the game on my second attempt on easy mode, which allows you up to 9 credits. Now, Apart from the number of credits, there is no difference between the different difficulty modes. The gameplay concept is simple, make it to the end of the stage and defeat the boss in a standard 2D platformer style by either jumping on an enemy's head, popping them from below, or slapping them. Random drops from enemies will come in the form of gems to increase your score, potions to regain a lost hit point of which you only have two, and finally a star that temporarily makes you invisible and allows you to throw projectiles. Overall, I would have enjoyed more challenge and length from the game, but the straightforward and simple nature of the gameplay was very enjoyable nonetheless. Now let's talk controls. Once again, we have a very simple two-button control scheme. B allows your character to jump, and Y activates your slap mechanic. Now the first jump or slap on an enemy will stun them, and a second will dispatch them. However, while stunned, you can also initiate contact, which will grab the enemy no matter the size, and allow you to throw them either horizontally or vertically. Throwing an enemy at others will automatically damage or dispatch them. Controls work well, and I actually broke out my arcade stick to experience this game as it was originally intended. And I have to say, if you have the possibility, it is definitely worth it, as it significantly increased my enjoyment of the game. The only negative I would have to say is a few of the enemy and balloon hitboxes felt off at times, where hits should have clearly registered, but didn't. However, it did not come up often enough to ruin my experience, just diminish it slightly. But if you are a hardcore score chaser, this might irritate you. Now for the graphics and sound. This will be, in my opinion, the make it or break it element for most who decide to pick up this game. For those into the 90s Japanese arcade art style, this game is a prime and truly great example. Its character and enemy designs are bright and colorful and very charming. Frame rate and performance is spot on with no dips or slowdowns. So very appreciated for a smooth arcade-like experience. For the music and sound, they are not award-winning, but would be perfectly at home in an actual arcade, motivating you to pump in extra quarters. Overall, the soundtrack is nicely fitting, 
although not groundbreaking. Overall, as I said earlier, the star of the show here will be the visual appeal of the art style, which if it's your thing, you will truly be in love with this game. So now it's time for the verdict. And if you're new to my channel or my review series, you can check out my full rating scale down below in the description of the video. Now in the case of Clockwork Aquario on the Nintendo Switch, I'm going to be giving the game a 7, putting it at the low end of a good game. Now I have to say, in the case of this game, this was one of the most difficult games I've had to score so far. The reason why is because, in my opinion, this is a very niche title. If you're into the Japanese arcade style, you could easily score this game a lot higher than a 7. However, at the same time, if you're not into this genre at all or you just have a passing interest, when you look at the volume of gameplay offered for the price they're selling it, you would actually be scoring this game probably a lot lower. There's also a huge nostalgia and conservation factor here where I love the concept of a company taking an unreleased game from the 90s, finally finishing it and bringing it back to life. And on a personal level, I even really got into this game, and I'm going to be looking at importing a physical version. However, when I look at this from a neutral reviewer's perspective, a game that does take 20 to 25 minutes to complete, being sold for only $20, if you're not really into the genre of game, the value just might not be there. So ultimately, I placed this game score somewhere in the middle, in between where it would be on my personal scale and where I would put it on the value scale. I hope this all helps you make a personal decision on whether you think you should be picking up Clockwork Aquario. And now to end the review, I would like your personal input. Are you going to be picking up this game? Does this look like a genre you want to get into, or are you rather maybe going to wait for a future sale if it hits? Also, on the way out, as I said earlier, don't forget that if you did like this review, please consider hitting that like button, subscribing to the channel if you aren't already, and hitting that notification bell so you know when all my future content comes out. And as usual, I hope I'll see all of you in my next video.